Okay, hello, person. Let's talk about what we're gonna do today. How about that? Mm. Today is gonna be some multiplayer code. We're gonna be working on the online co-op. And this is the first time I've touched this code since November. However, there's a pretty good foundation laid already to have this going. I could probably flip a few switches here. We can have things running in a couple minutes. Okay, so let's turn on. We want one camera. Where's the clients? That's it. Number we want two clients. Let's let's give this a shot. See what happens. I have not tried this since November, so so I'm hoping this still works. Um, this new this clients two thing is actually kind of a neat thing. It basically launches two clients of the game on the same computer and shortens them up puts them in a little window so you can see two of them at once and uh, that is really helpful for making multiplayer code because then you can quickly address certain things rather than having to try and get another computer going on your on your wherever the heck your battle station is you can just get two instances of the, the game running on the same machine oh it worked nice okay I'm not sure why it worked, but it worked. That's good. Okay, so we've got one client. Okay, so we got we got to get our clients synced up so that we have both of them running with the right settings. So this one has the setting where it skips the menu, and this other one does not have the skip menu setting. So we need to get those in sync. And we'll start with basically just opening up the saves.txt for the second client. That's gonna be in build client two saves and we want it to skip the menu we also want to do a window size 1080p make it a little smaller okay let's see how that goes so we have a big problem here for some reason we don't have both of these clients connected to the same game that might have something to do with the server this client's kind of dark so the reason i had this and sleep one in there was because it really helped to get one client up first and then the other one up a second Let's see if we can get it. So build client to make file. What if we sleep, sleep one there and then launch the client. We got each client connecting to my local server. The so local server is running and for some reason they're not connecting to each other or maybe they are connected to each other, but they are one player is not visible on the other player's screen. Oh, here we go. This is kind of the key, the key right here. I am player one of one. So client two thinks it's, there's only one player. There's a chance that we are not creating a joint or creating a match correctly. That sounds like a good step. Okay, stop the server, rerun the server, run the clients and see what the new log of the server tells us about whether it successfully has created a match or joined a match. Yeah, it successfully sent a join reply. That means it created the match correctly. Okay, so the, the problem is on the client's end. It's the server is sending this message, but for some reason during those whole five seconds while the client is waiting, it thinks it's not getting the join reply. And so it's, it times things out and creates its own world with its own everything. So why? Why does the client think that it's not getting a join reply? So... Our, the first time we call, we get the join reply, which would be in net, it reads it out correctly. It sees that there's a seed and there are players, but then the second time it fails. So it, it might be what's happening is that the message is being dis destroyed when it's read. Is that possible? Oh, it's not that it's being destroyed. It's just that it's being, every message has this rewind the ability to change its bit offset right here. We also need to rewind here so that it can get properly read correctly. No, you know, I got a better idea. This is stupid doing this at like a million times. It's a super coupled code. We can't have coupled codes. Not right. Can't do it. Nope, nope, nope. Not going to do it that way. It's big. We're way smarter if we make the message join reply. When it reads a message, it rewinds it so it's ready to be read again if need, if need be. So let's do this for every one of these messages that gets read. We go m.rewind. Let's just, before I go and do it for every single message, let's, I think that's right, rewind. Yeah, let's give this a shot. Oh, yes. It's work, oh, that was really, really delayed. What was going on there? Okay. It's like, it's it's got us both in the same world, but it's like super delayed. If I press the key on one on one screen, 
it takes forever for it to show up on the other so that's there's an issue but at least they're in the same world now so there's an actual server running right here this is i'm using xcode to run a server there's actually a server that runs online but i'm running one locally so we can make changes to the server and play around with that so yeah there's a separate client or there's two clients and a server Okay, this needs to be happened for every one of these messages that gets read for sure, but possibly for all the writes as well. Like, for example, in server, it goes out.write reply. Yeah, totally. It's a dedicated server, which, which is great for, it's like, it helps with matchmaking, for example. Like you have two clients that are hopefully in the world close enough to each other. They have a good ping time, but the server helps them both create a match and like one client creates a match another client can connect to that same match because the server helps in facilitating that matchmaking it's like a it's like a, a dating coach or something They're like oh these these clients want to get together let's let them have a good time okay we did just change a lot of message code so let's hope these two clients still can connect and chat and chat with each other and all that oh sweet we're in the same world for sure oh no one, it looks like one of our clients hung or crashed or something. It might have been the code that I just wrote. Yeah, that's not good. Oh, as soon as I start... Oh, okay, this guy crashed too as soon as I even moved it all. Okay, I definitely messed something up there. Pretty sure it's message input. Cannot rewind a message input because it it depends... You can, pu you can pack multiple input messages into one actual packet of information. Forgot about that. Okay, everything else though ought to be okay. Let's try this again. Okay, Doug. All right, we're back. we're back. We're back to moving correctly. This one player is. Oh, this one actually has a slight delay, but this one has a huge delay, which is super weird. Oh, it might be because there are different ticks, which is like impossible to tell. I can open up. I can I can see what tick is what over here, but like trying to get them both these clients to be like, oh, you can't. You can't like look at that and go, oh, you're at tick 3000. This one's already at 3200. Actually, I can tell for sure this one is way ahead in its ticks. If I look at the top left client, he's already at 39. This guy's at, still in the 38s. So yeah, for sure they're on the wrong tick, which will make a lot of sense. If this guy thinks he's at a certain tick and this guy thinks he's at a different tick, I could really ruin things as far as what, they're out of sync. Basically, they're out of, their timing is completely off. Let's, let's get these guys in sync. So we should be getting tick, like we, we sync up our ticks at some point. Oh, there it is, on message tick. Okay, so it looks for the match. Oh, okay, so it might not even be sending message tick. I might have disabled that actually. That would totally explain a lot. Oh, <laughs> yep, <laughs> I just, this looks like some pretty important code I disabled there. Probably because I was doing this old beta and I was like, I don't want, I don't want clients sending tick messages to the server every single tick. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. All right, that would really explain a lot of why these two clients were completely out of sync because they weren't even trying to sync each other up. They're just like, I think it's about 9:30, and the other guy's like, no, it's definitely 9:25 still. Okay, let's hope this works on the first try. There might be some other code that I need to enable. Oh good, we're seeing a ping time finally. We've got a 19 millisecond ping. Oh, 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 we crashed one of the clients. Okay, why the crash? That was really neat though. The, at the very first second there we had, their clients really in sync looking good. The first client was the one that assert failed. So the first client was about to send some of its network input. It wrote to a message saying, here's my network input. And then it read its own message back just to verify that it read correctly and it didn't read back correctly, which might have to do with rewinding or something. So if m.getType is not equal to C message input and set type input. All right. Yes. Nice. We can chat. We can have our we can chat back and forth. I'm chatting back and forth. And we can get our clients. It looks like they're pretty much in sync. Their ping times are good. This is awesome. Yeah, huge, right, Chuck? Man, this is huge. Totally huge. Nice. Oh, 
Right on. Cool. Right. In one stream, we've got things pretty much running once again. So this is huge. Basically, what I need to do now is kind of check this in. And some of my next steps are going to be to one, we have to get clients so that if a client joins another client and the other client has been playing for a while, we need to get the, the, the client that's joining all of the data, the input data that the client, the first client has already generated and then play it back in fast forward. So that's, that's the thing we're going to call fast forwarding. We need to be able to fast forward one client up to the state that the other clients in. That's a big step to get these clients like totally in sync because the reason it's working so well right now is that both of these clients started at exactly the same time. But we want players to be able to start playing and have their friend join them and just kind of casually have this awesome joining going on and the, the players don't know how it works but it just does it works. And we're going we're gonna to do that with fast forwarding in this case because we're using the whole lockstep methodology. So that's a that's another big step that will be one of the next things to be done. And then another huge thing that needs to be done is desyncs. So there's going to be issues where one client has a slight variable that's off and that will that can cause some big whole desyncs in between the clients. If each client moves their tick independently, how do they catch up with each other if they if they drift? See, that's a good question. They should be ticking at exactly the same rate. They have the same tick size. Yeah, the butterfly effect really can be huge with these things. So, so verifying that clients can stay, stay, I've already got some code where it should be, it basically, it basically sums up the whole game state into a checksum. And then the, the two clients can compare their checksums and say, all right, we're out of sync. We need to sync up. So there needs to be some kind of methodology for two clients to sync up. And I think what'll probably happen is rewinding. So players can look back at their, their input and say, okay, we were good until tick 1000. And at tick 1000, I noticed that we were off. So give me your input, client one. And so then you sync up your input and then rewind your game state and then fast forward back to the state with the correct input, which all assumes that you have your desyncs handled. So two big things there. That's kind of like, we're talking about months worth of work here like handling desyncs and this whole rewinding and fast. Once all of that's done, then we'll have this online co-op working really nicely and really smoothly. And um, it's, a, it's really a great way to do multiplayer because your clients can stay in sync really easily as long as you, as long as you, it's like you don't see as many janky rubber banding like effects that happen with some, some multiplayer games. It can be a really solid way of making games. And also you got this ability to do replays. So we can record our entire gameplay session in a very small amount of data. Cause all you have to save is the, the input data and the seed for the world. And you can play back an entire thing. So I could like, I could record my entire run, but like, like play it a whole run, a whole hour long session, beat the entire boss and play it back exactly the way I played it with just a very small playback file. So, that, that's a feature that might happen. Might be something that gets implemented eventually too. So the ability to just replay your old matches, or not matches, but runs. But so lots of things to, to be done, but I'm kind of just talking about what's gonna happen over the next couple months. So this was a really great stream here. Just in one stream, we got these two clients running once again, in sync with their, their ticks and their input. And for the most part, this is somewhat playable. I mean, this guy can run off and go fight some enemies and let's see what happens here. Oh, we, we have a, we already have a really big desync because player one has a wraith. So this is one of the features of the game. You can actually bind wraiths. When you fight an enemy, you can bind it as a wraith and now it's on your team. But so client one has this wraith. But client two does not have the wraith, so that's causing a huge desync already. So it's a really simple and easy one to to fix, though. All right, this is really great, really great first first stream back into the multiplayer code in quite some number of months. It's been since November that I've worked on multiplayer code, so really great to get it all kind of running again in one stream. Feeling good, feeling accomplished. 
So that is all the time I have for today, but I will be back next Wednesday, same time, 3 p.m. ish to 5 p.m. ish Pacific time. And that's all for today. So thanks a lot for watching this person and we'll see you all next Wednesday. Later, thanks for chatting. I appreciate y'all. Have a good one.